Okay, so I'm Mark, everyone, and thank you for attending um, the lecture 14 today. And um, today, inshallah, we'll be speaking about the um, properties of matter. So, um, before we have talked about matter, right? Uh, last class, we spoke about matter, and we said that matter is anything that has a mass and occupies a space. So if you remember, I told you uh, that matter could be like anything like a table, like a desk, like a computer, like money, like a sandwich, uh, like a mug. All these are called matter. So anything that has a mass and occupies a space, I should uh, call a matter. So today, inshallah, we'll be learning about the properties of this matter. What are the different properties of the matter? So the properties of a matter could be classified as either physical properties or uh, chemical properties. So what is the difference? The physical property is not a chemical property. Okay, which is, I know it sounds funny, um, but what does a physical property mean? The physical property is the characteristic that can be observed without changing the composition or identity, like color, like shape, or like size. So what does that mean? Uh, let's say, for example, that I give you two cups, one filled with orange juice, the other one is filled with water, and I ask you to tell me the difference between them. Can you do that? The answer, I'm sure, is yes, right? Because, um, because you can distinguish between them based on, on what? On color, right? On smell, on taste, that you, you, then you are just using your five senses to find the difference between the water cup and the uh, and the orange juice. Okay, and the same thing if I have a small child, maybe three years old, and I give him or her two balls, one large ball and one small ball, and then I ask what is the difference between them. So the, the child does not have to go to the lab to tell me the difference, right? And he or she can just say, oh, if this one is large, this one is small, this one is red, this one is yellow, and, and, and so on. So this is how we define a physical property. So the physical property is the property that can be observed by using the senses. So it's like what? It's like color, like shape, like hardness, like softness, like smoothness, and like roughness. Now let's speak about the states of matter. So if you remember, we have learned before about the, the four different states of matter, the solid state, the liquid state, the gas state, the plasma state. Now all these are physical properties. These are not chemical properties. Now let me explain this to you. Now let's talk, for example, about ice. We know that ice is H2O. If ice melts, it turns into water, and water is also H2O. If I heat the water, it turns into vapor, and vapor is also H2O, right? So all of them are still H2O, but there is just a change of state. There is just a change of state, but the, the water itself is not changing. So what else is a physical property? The temperature is a physical property. So if you measure the temperature of any liquid, this will not change the composition of the liquid. So it is a physical property. And what about, what about the melting point, the boiling point? Remember those, the melting point is the temperature at which the matter changes from the solid state to the liquid state, right? If you measure this, this is just a physical property. It will not change the state of matter. And what about the boiling point? It's the same thing. It will not change the state of matter. So let's see what else is a physical property. Let's read, read the, this page. What do we see in this page? We see length, width, height are physical properties. Mass, remember mass, is the amount of matter on an object. Like for example, if I ask you, what is your mass? Your mass is your bones, your flesh, your body, and so on. This is called your mass. And what about volume? Volume is also a physical property. Length times width times height. 
What about the density? Density is the mass divided by volume. That's also a physical property. Now, this is one is very important. It's called the specific gravity. And what's a specific gravity? It's the density of the substance divided by the density of water. This is called a specific the specific gravity, and this is this is also a, a physical property. Uh, and then we also have the viscosity. And what the viscosity is? It's the resistance of a fluid or a, um, or a fluid to flow. So viscosity means what? Means that you have, for example, two cups, one filled with water, other one filled with honey, and then you drop them. And then the water moves faster than the honey, right? The honey has more resistance than the water, right? So, so, uh, so, so that's what we call the viscosity. The viscosity is also a physical property. Now look at this. Now I can use physical properties to separate substance from each other. Now, if you look at this picture, you see uh, some large seeds and some small seeds, and I want to I want to separate them. So I would like to separate them based on one physical property, which is called the size. Right. So if I do sifting, you know this is this process is called sifting. So you separate the small ones from the large ones. So here we use the sifting as a physical property to uh, separate two uh, substances from each other. Now what about this? Here I have a mixture of sand and um, iron powder, and I would like to separate them. So how can I separate them? I will use one physical property, which is called the magnetism, right? So if I use a magnet, the magnet will attract the um, uh, iron powder and it will leave the, um, it will leave the, um, um, uh, the sand uh, uh, here. So now I use the property which is called the magnetism. So all these are just what? All these are just um, uh, physical properties. Now there is something called a physical change. What a physical change is? The physical change is any change that alters the form or appearance of a matter without changing its composition or identity. Like, let me give you an example of what does a physical change mean. Let's say that we have a wire that is made up of aluminum and I bend this wire. So when I bend the wire, the shape of the wire will change, but the aluminum will not change, right? It would be the same. Or if you have a tennis ball and you squeeze it, so the shape of the tennis ball will change, but the material of the tennis ball, which is probably rubber, it will not change. Now the same thing as I mentioned before, the change of state is a physical change. Again, as I told you, if you change from ice to water to vapor right so all these are just physical changes these are not chemical change so a substance that undergoes physical change is still the same substance as before uh, it changes now here we have different examples of of uh, physical changes so i have paper cutting if i cut a paper then the size will change, but the paper itself will not change. Bending a wire, breaking a glass, all these are physical changing. Boiling, melting, freezing, all these are just um, examples of a uh, physical change. So if you have a piece of metal, you heat it up, uh, it the, the color changes, right? But the, 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 the substance itself will not change. So remember now we talked about two things. I've talked about something called a physical property and something called a physical change. The physical property is like shape, size, and so on. The physical change is when you change shape, size, and so on, and so on, without changing the matter itself. Now look at this picture and try to figure out what is going on in this picture. In this picture, what do we see? We see something called a distillation. And what is distillation? Distillation 
is used to uh, separate um, substances from each other. So distillation is used to separate liquids of different boiling points from each other. So here in this flask, I have two fluids that are mixed together and I would like to separate them. But let's say, for example, that one of them boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but the other one boils at 65 degrees Celsius. And I would like to separate them. So how I do that, I heat the mixture. So once I reach 60 degrees Celsius, what will happen, the first liquid will vaporize, right? It first boils, then it vaporizes. And then I can condense it and separate by the other one, but the other one will stay here. So I call this what? I call this distillation. Now we use the distillation processes when we uh, try to separate the oil component from each other because if you have different, if you get the oil, the raw oil from the ground, it's actually a mixture of many fluids together. So if you want to separate them, uh, because you can make more money if you separate them, then you can then you can use this process, which is called the distillation, to separate the different components of the oil or the crude oil um, based on uh, based on the uh, their boiling point. Now let's talk about the other part of our lesson today, which is called a chemical property. See, if I say it's a chemical property, it means that there should be some, some. Uh, we, we need to talk about the composition of the matter. What is the matter made up of? So the chemical property describes how the composition of a substance will change when the substance interact with other substances or with some forms of energy. So here there should be some interaction between the substance and other substances or the substance and some forms of energy. It means that there should be some heating or changing of energy and so on. Now there is a chemical property uh, are observed when the composition of a substance of a substance changes. So if there is no change in the composition, then there will not be any uh, chem uh, chemical property. So I so so I have to see some changes in the composition, or I have to see some chemical composition of of the matter. So let's see some examples of chemical properties. Let's read these three words and see if you know their meaning. You have something called silver tarnish, rust, and flammability. Let's see what do they mean. I will start with the middle one called rusting. So rusting means what means you have a piece of iron, you leave it outside uh, in the water or in the air after a month or so it makes this brown layer over the iron that's what we call rust right so 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 rusting is happening because of the interaction between the iron and the atmosphere it produces a new substance right which we call the rust now let's see what does that mean flammability Flammability means the ability to burn, the ability to burn. Like for example, a piece of paper is flammable. What does that mean? It means it can burn, right? Or a piece of wood is flammable. Why? Because it can burn. So what about this one, silver tarnishing? Um, now what does that mean? Now, you know, if you have a keychain or a necklace made up of silver and you use it for a year or so, then you notice that the color of the silver starts to change. And this layer um, that is formed over the silver is what we call the silver tarnishing. Again, it happens because of the interaction between the silver and the atmosphere. Okay, 
Now, what else is um, a chemical change? The formation of the, what is this? Cooper sulfate, a Cooper sulfate. So this is just, uh, if you have Cooper and you leave it in the atmosphere, it interacts with the sulfur and the oxygen in the atmosphere or the sulfate in the atmosphere. And it makes the Cooper sulfate and it makes a green um, layer over the, uh, over the Cooper. Now look at this uh, picture and here we have some, we have a, a, a container that contains some uh, tablets from a pharmacy for example and maybe you guys have noticed this, if you buy those tablets from a pharmacy then usually they put it in a dark container and if you read the prescription they always say keep it away from the reach of children and also from the direct heat and the sun. And why is that? Why they want us to keep it away from the heat and the sun? The reason is, is what? Yes, of course, because if the sun or the heat, um, or if these tablets are exposed to sun or heat, then, then, the, then it can change something else, right? It can produce another material that could harm the patient, right? That's why, and uh, that's why we want to keep it away from the heat and the sun. So if the substance changes to another substance, that's what we call a chemical change. So now I have to stop because I want you to know the difference between these two words. One of them is called a chemical property, the other one is called a chemical change. But the chemical property, it means that the substance is having this property. But if the substance changes to another substance, that's when I call a chemical change. So let's give an example. Let's say, for example, that a piece of paper is flammable. Flammable means what? Means it can burn. But does that mean that all papers in the world are burning now? Of course not, right? But if a paper burns, that's when I say it is a chemical change. So another example, let's say I have a piece of iron. A piece of iron can make rust, right? Um, but does it mean that all iron in the world is rusting now? Of course not. But if iron makes rust, if iron makes rust, then, um, then I call this a chemical change. So we say that a chemical change occurs when one type of matter changes into another type. When one type of matter changes to another type, that's what we call a, a chemical change. Uh, like for example, uh, look at this. If you speak about any chemical reaction, like any reaction that you guys have learned in university or in high school, uh, this, is, this is a kind of a chemical change. And why is that? Because new substances are produced. Right? So whenever you change the composition of the original substance, that's what we call, when we call a, a chemical change. Now look at this very important reaction. It's the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. You guys know like when NASA tries to send a spacecraft to the moon or to any part or in space, they don't use the gasoline that we use in our cars, but they use some kind of special fuel and this fuel is a mixture between hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen and oxygen and and um, and when when they interact when they combine with each other they make sound they make light they make heat right so they make big explosion with sound light and heat and um, and um, uh, and then the spacecraft uh, can can move right so so that's what we we call a chemical change so so let's now review this we have a chemical property and a chemical change so i'll give you one minute you can read this and read this then we will discuss them so so do we see this we have the chemical property is the ability or the potential to undergo a chemical change. It's just the ability, as I told you. The paper or a paper 
is able to burn so it is flammable so flammability is a chemical property but if the paper burns and it turns into ashes and and uh, and uh, smoke and so on that's what we call a chemical change so as you can see flammability is a chemical property but burning is a chemical change ability to tarnish remember tarnish with the silver is the chemical property but tarnishing is a chemical change ability to rust like wood iron is a chemical property but rusting is a chemical change okay so the actual process of tarnishing which is silver plus sulfur compound in the air which makes the ags that's what we call the rusting and as I, again as i told you if you have cooper it interacts with the sulfur and the oxygen it makes cooper sulfate that again uh, is a chemical change and and so on okay now let's talk about those uh, five signs and clues that if we see them it could be an evidence of a chemical change now remember this is not if we see those signs that does not mean it's a chemical change but this could be just clues that there could be a chemical change so what are these signs and clues about a chemical change now first one is the change of in energy if energy is released or energy is absorbed so whenever there is absorption of energy or a release of energy then there could be a chemical change now remember now remember this so uh, let's say that you go from the uh, uh, ice to water if i go from ice to water there would be energy absorption of course ice needs to absorb energy to change to water right but remember this is just a physical change it's not a chemical change um uh, so, so so if i see a change in energy it's a clue that there could be a chemical change but it does not always mean that there is a chemical change number two is the formation of gas bubbles formation of gas bubbles so if you see bubbles and then this could also mean a chemical change gas bubbles you know like um, you know what does it mean like this word anti anti-acid tablets you know sometimes if uh, you eat um, a heavy meal and you cannot digest the food and oh i cannot digest so they give you those big tablets the vitamin c tablets and if you put it in water it makes a form and sound that's what we call anti-acid anti if you drink it it helps you to digest right so the the anti-acid and water when they interact with each other they make a new substance and you see those bubbles and the gas form then this is an example of a, a chemical uh, change so what else the production of a solid uh, which uh, for example if you guys remember this reaction between acid and base uh, that gives you salt and water acid plus base gives you salt and water like for example uh, if i say the um, naoh plus hcl um, gives me um, uh, give me an ACL plus H2O right so it's the sodium hydroxide plus the hydrochloric acid gives me a salt in ACL plus warp so once I see the formation of salt uh, that means that there is a chemical change so what about the color change um, like for example if you eat an apple and uh, eat an apple but you, you cannot finish the apple you can eat only half of it you leave it on the counter and then you see a color change in the apple so this color change is another evidence of a chemical change right because it happens because of the minerals in the apple interacts with the uh, with the uh, atmosphere now the last thing here which is the release of an odor or a smell and and for example if you have a, an egg a bad egg 
and it smells very bad. And why is that? Again, it, it means that there's a chemical reaction that took place inside this egg that what makes this bad odor. So this bad odor, um, which for example in the egg is because of the formation of the H2S gas, um, which smells very bad, right? Um, and, and this could be an evidence of a, a chemical change. Okay, uh, now let me talk about this topic which is called the withering. Let's talk about this, uh, this topic which is called the withering. So here what do you see? Uh, you see very nice pictures and please don't ignore them. Um, uh, this is about something called the withering. And what does withering mean? Weathering means the effect of weather parameters on rocks, walls, cars, houses, mountains, and so on. Like, what does that mean? Let's say sometimes when we drive a car on the highway and look at and watch those small hills um, at the sides of the road, then we see like parts of the cliffs or the hill had been removed uh, because or eroded because of the effect of wind. So when the wind hits the mountain or the cliffs, it removes parts of, uh, parts of it, right? This is what we call weathering. Or if you have a very nice house by the beach, and then waves all the time come and hits and hit your house uh, or the or, or hit the walls of your house then then by the time you, the walls would be eroded right um, and so this is what we call a weathering okay so it is that it is basically the effect of the weather parameters like heat humidity rain dust uh, um, wind and so on on uh, on the um, uh, on the cliffs and and mountains and walls and and so on. Okay, now the weathering could be either a physical weathering or it could be a chemical weathering. Okay, so what do you see in the left is the physical weathering. Okay. So physical weathering means what? Means, for example, you have big rocks, but you have also a strong water stream. And when the water moves fast, it hits the rocks and it breaks the rocks into smaller rocks, right? So now the shape and the size of the rocks um, change, right? But the, the rocks material does not change. So that is called a, a physical change. Okay, so, uh, so also sometimes in, in cold countries, um, um, what happens is during the summer, the water is, of course, will be <coughs> in the liquid state because the temperature is normal, uh, like 23, 24, sometimes even higher. So the water is, is moving and it can seep between the rocks. It can go between the rocks. So when the winter comes, water starts to freeze and as we learned before, when water freezes, it expands. And when water expands, it produces a force on the rocks and it can make, um, it can fracture the rocks. It can break the rocks, right? So that is also an example of a physical change. But look at this very uh, nice picture uh, that we see on the right. Now in this nice picture, what we see, we see um, um, a rock that is uh, covered with a white layer. Now, now this white layer is not ice. Maybe for the first instant, you, you will think it's ice, but this is not ice. This is just because of the effect of the water with those rocks. Okay. So let's see, um, let's see uh, how we uh, understand this. So here, um, these rocks are made up of something called limestone, limestone. And, and the limestone contains calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate. Uh, so this water uh, is also an acidic water. So what does acidic water mean? Acidic water means a water that absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, so it becomes acidic water. So when this acidic water interacts with those limestones, 
it produces another material which is the which is the which is the calcium bicarbonate which is this white material that is um, that is um, um, accumulating on this uh, on this wall so so let's say this reaction one more time so i have those limestones those are made up of calcium carbonate ca um, uh, caco3 uh, and when the calcium carbonate interact with the water when acidic so you can write this water when acidic and uh, so it gives you what it gives you the calcium bicarbonate which is this white layer that is formed on those um, on those uh, on on the cliff now now this is now now uh, this is of course a chemical change why because now we have a new substance that had been uh, produced a new substance has been produced that's why it's called a, a chemical weathering okay now let's move on to the next topic which is called the conservation of mass conservation of mass um, now for the conservation of mass now if you guys remember we have talked before about something called the conservation of momentum conservation of energy and now we speak about the conservation of mass now what is the conservation of mass it says that during a chemical change matter is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical change matter is neither created and nor destroyed so let, let's give an example now let's say that i have a paper and as we learned today papers are flammable they can burn so let's say i get a piece of paper and i get some sensitive scale to find the mass of the of the paper and then i burn the paper when i burn the paper the paper turns into what it turns into dust ashes and and, and smoke and so on so assume that I can collect all those components and I find their weight one more time. Now I compare the weight before burning and after burning. Now I will find the weight the same. Now why is that? Because mass cannot be created or nor destroyed. When I burn the paper, all what I did is I changed this mass into something else, which is mass, dust, and, and, and so on, okay? So, again, mass is neither created nor destroyed, or during a chemical change, matter is neither created nor destroyed. Now, there's a nice experiment that you can do at home. So, if you go to your kitchen, maybe if your mom or your sister like to, um, to, to bake, uh, usually uh, usually you will have this kind of scale at your kitchen so just uh, pick up a cup from from any of the kitchen cabinets and put some vinegar inside this cup and get some baking soda again you will find it somewhere in the kitchen and put it inside a balloon and then try to find the mass of all these um, or all these components like the flask the vinegar the balloon and the baking soda now 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 try to mix them using the balloon like this now you will see a white foam and you will see a reaction don't worry this is safe don't worry you can do this at home and you will see that the balloon will start to uh, uh, like uh, it will start to uh, to to blow and 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 um, and it looks like a gas is being formed here right and and if you watch the scale all over your experiment you will notice that the reading of the scale does not change okay now first thing who can tell me why do we need a balloon in this experiment yes excellent you need a balloon because you want to trap the gas right because because when you do this kind of reaction a gas is formed right co2 gas uh, is usually formed and and if you let this gas go now remember the gas is made up of particles right uh, so those particles should have a mass so if i let it go in the air then i'm losing part of a mass 
right? So now my experiments will not work as, as it should, as it should be. But if I can trap the gas inside the balloon, then in this case, the mass before should equal to the mass after. Now, of course, you can do this in vinegar, but you have a lab. You can also use the hydrochloric acid, but you have to be careful when using the hydrochloric acid. So just get the baking soda in AHCO3 and mix it with the hydrochloric acid. It gives you Cl2, H2O, and a salt. You see, the formation of a salt here means what? Means a chemical change, right? Because we have mentioned that a chemical change means new component will be formed, right? So this, so I call those the reactants, and they call those the products. So if the products are different than the reactants, it means that there is a, a chemical change and a new substance is being, has, has been uh, formed, okay? So I think uh, this is all uh, for me uh, for um, today, and thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy those online classes, and I will see you next class, inshallah. Thank you.